There are moments throughout human history that are epic both in scope and in scale. There are self-owns that are absolutely legendary, and then there is the final chapter in today's story, which is supposedly the exonerating evidence of the five black teenagers in the Bike Karen saga. And when you watch this video, when you take in the information as shown by the supposed exonerators, who happened to be, by the way, the sister of the person who encountered this so-called Bike Karen, what you ultimately end up finding out is that the Bike Karen was 100% in the right, and the black kid in question at the center of all this knowingly took the bike from this woman. But before we get into that, I just want to say to thank you to everyone who signed up over on actualjusticewarrior.com slash join. You get early access to videos on the secret video page. I will give me the money. Give you, give me the money. Okay. And thank you to my podcast listeners on Apple, Spotify, and Google's podcasting platform. Fought for over a year to get on Google's podcasting platform. So thank you so much for actually subscribing. The only reason why Sarah Jane Comrie was able to produce this receipt for this bicycle is because she jumped over this young man standing right here who had his hands on the handlebar. So this video was posted an hour before I started shooting this video by a guy on Twitter who is known as Tizzy ENT, and he actually preemptively blocked me from viewing it because I had been tearing him apart on Twitter and people were tagging me in the replies so that I could do it again. Now, in this video, we have this proposition put forward by the alleged thief or alleged victim, depending on what side you're on, his older sister. This young man standing right here, who had his hands on the handlebars, jumped over him, impales herself on his bike, and scans the QR code to begin the ride. How did all of this happen, and how do I know what happened? Because that young man is my little brother. Now, what's great about this is that we have the older sister. So she has the receipts and she is making the claim that she knows this to be true and that this pregnant woman just leapt over the bike and then jumped on it and then just stole the bike or attempted to steal the bike from her brother. And she knows it because she has the receipts and she has the proof. However, this woman is so buffoonish, she's actually going to prove that Sarah Comrie, the so-called bike Karen, was 100% in the right and her brother physically took this bike from her bike number five six zero three nine one five was in my brother's possession from st nicholas ave in manhattan ave all the way to first ave in east 30th street from the hours of 6 33 p.m to 7 19 p.m at 7 19 p.m they docked the bike so you need to really pay attention to the times that are being presented so her brother rides this bike from his area down to this area where this took place he docks the bike at 7 19 p.m and to be clear this means that the bike is open for access from the public anybody can register this bike regardless of whether or not he docked it because he didn't want to pay while he stood idle with the bike or not, it is open to the public and not in his possession. Sarah Jane Comrie walks up to them, asks, hey guys, can I use one of you guys' bikes? She says this as there are other bikes sitting idle at the bike rack. They politely decline. She asks them again, mentions that she's pregnant, and they still decline. Then, with my brother standing next to the bike with his hands on the handlebars, she jumps onto the bike, sits on the bike, and scans the QR code, thus beginning her ride. So I just want to be 100% clear so you guys don't have any room for misinterpretation. I believe that this woman, the sister of the guy involved in this incident, is lying right here. I believe that this version of the events, that there were plenty of bikes absolutely everywhere, and this woman just walked up to them and asked to use their bike in particular, makes no sense at all, is not legitimate, it is not backed up by any realm of logic, and I also don't believe that she jumped over a bike that his hand was already on in order to take it. In fact, according to her account, she went up to this, got on the bike, scanned it and then these guys came over so i believe that it makes way more sense for a pregnant 36 year old woman off a 12 hour shift to go to a bike that was unoccupied get on it and then for this guy to be nearby and try to prevent her from taking it it is just the far more logical proposition with my brother standing next to the bike with his hands on the handlebars she jumps onto the bike sits on the bike and scans the qr code thus beginning her ride. 
Mind you, the bike was in my brother's possession at this time. Also, and this is incredibly crucial, the bike is not in his possession. He may have docked it in the hopes that he could not be charged for the time that he was idle, so he could talk, so he could do whatever, but it is clearly and obviously not in his possession, and it is available on the City Bike app for anybody to rent. So her assertion that it's in his possession is some kind of metaphorical possession because in reality, it is open to the public. Thus, anybody who scans that bike then takes possession over it. Let's be 100% clear about that. So this screenshot is from six minutes after the previous ride ended as you can see 7 25 p.m previous ride ended 7 19 p.m these gentlemen these boys did not steal this bike from sarah jane comrie she stole the bike from them then proceeded to weaponize her whiteness so the next thing that we're told is that his secondary scan is at 7 25 p.m they scanned the bike at 725 and this is supposed to be proof positive that sarah stole the bike from them and weaponized her whiteness in order to do so however this is incredibly suspicious based on what she's going to tell us next and it completely refutes and absolutely destroys her position video started being recorded at 724 p.m close to 725 um my brother's ride that was in the previous screenshot starts at 7 25. the initial ride where my brother rid rode the bike all the way over to the but this bike dock ended at 7 19 p.m so according to her her brother's ride ended at 7 19. this video with her already on the bike and in possession of it starts at 7 24 and her brother ends up signing up for the bike at 725 which is very interesting because in this minute and 30 second video you actually see the light being on so it is in her possession as matches her receipt they shove her back into the dock thus turning the light off and then they scan it which is the 725 ride thus meaning that it was in her possession initially and they took it from her during the course of the video captured on video and supported and proven out by the timestamps of this girl so her alleging that the 36 year old pregnant woman stole the bike from him is actually refuted by every data point that she brings up during the course of this video and again i will point out there is no way in hell that this woman walked up to a bike that already had hands on it in order to take it unless she made the reservation before and that was the bike that was indicated or unless it was open and what they're saying is completely false i believe what she is saying is false it is supported by the receipts supported by the evidence that she had possession of it during the course of the video and he took possession after it after they pushed the bike back into the dock which lines up perfectly with her story lines up perfectly with the receipts produced by this guy's older sister and proves beyond any shadow of a doubt that they took the bike from her there were a number of bikes at the bike rack already there when she arrived she still proceeded to try to take the bike from my brother help 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 make trying to make it seem like these boys stole this bike from her the bike is on my brother's account the reason she's calling for help and trying to make it seem like they stole the bike from her is because they stole the bike from her as proven by you it only got onto his account after they shoved it back in the dock and then scanned it on their account again i always took note of this early on that he was blocking her from being able to scan it during the video you can see it right here in the screenshot you can also take note again of the light turning on which is when it's activated and available it turning off during the course of the video and then it reactivating this lines up with her receipt this lines up with his receipt and he gave up possession of the bike at 719 the idea that you can just leave it and then expect to be entitled to get it back is absolutely ridiculous and absurd it is not defamation of character if the way that you behave reflected your character i agree it is not defamation of character when you're commenting on behavior that reflects the character of those involved so when i talk about your brother acting in a thuggish brutish way in that he took this bike from her which you just proved to us that's not defamation that's me acknowledging the reality and the facts as they were presented on the video that was uploaded by you and supported by the evidence that was published by you thank you so much for doing that for us thank you so much 
for showing that to us because it really reflects his character. On top of that, this story was sold repeatedly as entitled white woman tries to take this bike from five young black teenagers, only to find out that the entitled person in this situation was in fact this young man right here who thought that he could dock the bike and have it available to the public because he didn't want to pay for idle time and then nobody was allowed to take it until he finished his conversation or whatever when he decided that he wanted to ride along with it there were a number of bikes at the bike rack already there when she arrived and if you're going to comment about how there's bikes everywhere and available Maybe you should tell that to your brother that there's bikes everywhere and available and he's not entitled to that bike that is open to the public and he's not entitled to swear at, shove, threaten, and then redock forcefully and then take possession of a bike just because he happened to ride it. The city bikes are available to anybody who's on the app and when they're docked, they are available to the public. So the only entitlement present, the only person who acted out of turn was this guy who felt so entitled to this bike based on your abstract notion of possession that if he just decides that he's gonna take this rentable bike that's available to the public later, therefore he owns it, your brother. I told you I'd seen receipts, but let's go ahead and review some things. First and foremost, I would like to reiterate that for myself and many others that initially posted about this, we weren't talking about a stolen bike. We didn't care about a stolen bike. It was her behavior. So first of all, I want to thank this complete and utter buffoon, this professional insane person for staying on this story and getting the sister to come out and produce the evidence that condemns her brother. I also want to point out that it was always about the stolen bike. 100% Benjamin Crump's tweet, all the different coverage, everything that was stated in the media was about this white woman stealing the bike from him. Now we have proven that he, in fact, fact stole the bike from her he took it from her it is on video supported by the receipts so that is the situation that we're at also as if this supposedly exonerating video isn't damning enough I noticed that he took the bike from the original station, which is the St. Nicholas Ave and Manhattan Avenue station at 633, and it shows his route, and it shows him dropping the bike off at 1st Avenue and East 30th Street. Now, we know that Comrie, based on the video that she presented, grabbed it at 724, then he physically forced her into the dock and then took it back from her at 725, but did you notice that he didn't even ride it? Did you notice that he took it out at the 1st Ave East? 30th station and just redocked it at 731 it looks like it's behind the tiktok logo so it's a little hard to see but i'm gonna go 731 so my theory that he took this bike to not even ride it to just idle it is confirmed by this so he fought a pregnant woman swore at her intimidated her to not even ride the bike he rode it a considerable distance to get there he was still with it he needed it to get back to where he had come from. So the claim about him being a poor Aladdin who just needed this bike at that moment at the same time and this woman taking it from him, total nonsense. He just held it out of the dock for about six minutes because he felt entitled to do so because he wanted it for later. It only became about a stolen bike after she released receipts and made claims that they were trying to steal her bike. No, it became about a stolen bike when you guys accused her of stealing a bike based on an out of context video that honestly should have shown you that the guys were clearly in the wrong as they were hurling epithets at her. And of course, the ridiculous notion that a physician's assistant off a 12 hour shift would go and steal somebody's bike. It became about a stolen bike when you guys doxed this woman, when you called for her to be fired, when you were harassing her at her home based on the notion that she walked up to a group of five black teenagers in order to rob the bike now to be clear she's not pressing criminal charges there is no police investigation or anything like that so even saying it's alleged is not really all that accurate for either scenario because they're not even formally being accused of that but i will say you guys didn't even say allegedly that she stole the bike you just asserted it in the affirmative so right now when we have real solid evidence based on what the sister proved that this young black man actually took the bike from her i will still say alleged even though again it's not even alleged because there's no police involved it's not even at the level of alleged it's below that but it is proven out by these receipts remember her attorney said after a 12-hour shift she got on an available bike which no individuals were touching and paid for it through the app as she backed it up from the docking station, a group of five people approached her and claimed the bike was theirs. One or more of the individuals in the group physically pushed her bike with her on it 
back into the docking station, causing it to relock. That's her story. And his story directly contradicts hers. So what I love about the internet is that it exposes people who are incapable of critical thought. He just asserted that his story completely contradicts hers. But guess what? It actually doesn't. The evidence presented does not contradict what she said. He even acknowledges with the receipts, and she acknowledges it, whether she realizes it or not, that he surrendered possession of this bike when it was docked. She then got on it, scanned it. We see on the video the transfer of possession of the bike when they force it into the station. And really what's in dispute is whether or not you believe that this woman ran up and jumped on a bike that this guy was holding with his hands in the dock or not. I don't believe that. I think that's ridiculous. I'm open to being proven wrong. Maybe this woman was like, I'm going to go get them and take that one bike of the 10,000 that were available. But in reality, I think, again, we should probably err on the side of what's more likely, which is it was available. They were probably close by, so they were probably monitoring the bikes, having a chat or whatever. And based on the fact that he wanted to take the bike and this was his plan, he was upset that this woman ended up getting on it. And he acted poorly he acted threateningly he was swearing at her he was calling her names he was being vicious and that's all shown by the video and the receipts he provided go along with his account of what happened and they prove it no more or no less than her receipts do and i know there's gonna be people who are like yeah but it was docked that proves that it was available and she scanned it so right here in this moment you have a little bit of clarity where he's like oh it was docked and that proves that it was available. Yeah, it does. So he knows, he realizes that he's proven himself completely wrong this whole time, but let's hear his explanation. He rode at a considerable distance to get there. He was still with it. He needed it to get back to where he had come from. And it's reasonable to believe that he believed it was still on his account, especially since there were other bikes available that she could have taken. So Big Boy right here in his infinite idiocy says that the counter argument to him surrendering possession and proving that beyond any shadow of a doubt by the receipts that show him docking the bike was that he rode it a long way to get there and he says he needed it, but he wanted it to come back. And also there were other bikes available. So this guy was just feeling entitled. She jumps on an available bike to her, scans it, and then he physically takes it from her on the video so yeah you're completely wrong and i will repeat back to him especially since there were other bikes available that she could have taken that there were other bikes available according to your own account according to your sister's account and according to big boy's account right here and you want to talk about being defamed there are a ton of articles that paint that young man as a thief this is from a day ago critics called city bike karen a racist then the facts came out usa today city bike karen viral video shows why we shouldn't rush to judgment it says because she produced receipts, she isn't racist, and then has a whole section about false narratives often spread quick and confirm our biases. So I want to talk about how absurd this is. He thinks it is defamatory and paints him as a thief to say, then the truth came out, then she showed the receipts and all of that stuff. However, what we were highlighting as defamatory was Benjamin Crump saying that she used her white tears in order to steal this. Rayshawn Ritchie saying that she stole this bike. Because that bolsters her argument to do what she's attempting to do, which is theft under any other circumstance. We will call this attempted theft if the black male went up to the white female who paid for her opportunity to utilize the device and he decided to grab it and try to take it. We will call that clearly attempted theft. So let's call it as it is. The mayor of Edinburgh, North Carolina calling her a pregnant thug. I think these black uh, black young men, specifically the one whose credit card was used to pull this this bike out of the system uh, was attacked by a pregnant thug. Let's just let's just call it what it is. Had that been had had this been reversed, everybody would have been up in uproar about how these black men have no care for life or people's rights or people's property. Yeah. This is what happens when white women cry help, even when they don't deserve it. The exploitation of the word help in this case is unbelievable. The fake tears on demand is unbelievable. She should be tried for endangering her fetus, her unborn fetus. She put that child in danger because had that had that young man re reacted in a different way when she pushed him for something that he. He's already used his resources to pay for, it would have been a whole different situation. So she right. should be liable, not just for battery on him, but the, the attempt, the battery that she could have caused that fetus. And all of these headlines and titles and all that, that asserted in the affirmative for sure, without even the qualifier of allegedly, that she did in fact take this bike from those five black teenagers. I've heard she said she wishes that young man no ill will, 
but the Clear Her Name campaign making him collateral damage since says otherwise. This was initially about her behavior in that video and how it was dangerous. In my opinion, the way she has behaved since is equally, if not more, reprehensible. So this guy is a complete and utter schmuck. He doesn't understand the topics that he's talking about, but thankfully he's so buffoonish. He's so ignorant. He's such a doofus that he just proved beyond any shadow of a doubt, put a bow tie on this story that the city bike alleged Karen was in fact in the right. And it turns out that the young man actually did steal the bike. But you know what? I appreciate this guy because he is such a complete and utter dunce, such a failure, such an ignoramus that he ended up proving beyond any shadow of a doubt that she was in fact in the right that he did in fact take the bike from her and we have the receipts and the time codes that all confirm this 100 i really appreciate you buddy for doing that i really appreciate you exposing these teenagers and exposing this karen hoax even as you take a victory lap as your entire narrative burns down around you but hey those are just my thoughts let me know your thoughts down in the comments below if you like this video show them by leaving a like subscribe for more content follow me on all my social media support me via the support links in the description of this video this has been me talking about the bike karen story finally concluding till next time